Here we have a predator, crocodile, and prey, zebra. The crocodile is trying to reach the zebra, but it's on the wrong side of the bank of the river. So it has a swim and then a crawl along the land. And it does each of these sections at different speeds. The illustration here, its landing point P, is measured X metres from this perpendicular line. It's perpendicular to the bank of the river. Um, so when it lands at P, it's X metres away from this perpendicular line. And it has this distance, be 20 minus X, uh, to get to the zebra. Now the closer its landing point is to the zebra, the more it has to swim, the less it has to crawl. So as X gets larger and closer to 20, the crawling distance is a lot less. And if it actually lands at point P, which is at the zebra, it will have no crawling to do at all. In fact, the whole journey it takes to the zebra will be nothing but swimming. On the other hand, if it doesn't like swimming and wants to do the shortest swim possible, that would surely be the perpendicular swim directly across. In other words, X meters would be zero. X would be zero. The point P, the landing point, would be on this perpendicular line. So let's see if we can uh, do part one of section A. And we're told to calculate the time taken if the crocodile does not travel on land. So if it doesn't travel on land, we've said it must do the whole journey swimming, so the landing point P will be at the zebra. In other words, this distance X will have to be 20 metres. So we would work out for this one the value of the time when x is 20. So we'd plug that into this formula, 5 times the square root of 36 plus 20 squared, which is 400, plus 4 times 20 minus 20. So that's the substitution. So we have 5 times the square root of 436. And this, of course, is 4 times 0, so that vanishes. And let's work out what that is. It's not an exact value. Let's work out 5 times the square root of 436. And that comes to 104. Point four zero three, and so on, which is approximately measured in tenths of a second. So this is 104 tenths of a second, which is approximately 10 point, we'll round it off to one decimal place, 10.4 seconds. So that's the one decimal place. So let's now have a look at part two. Calculate the time taken of the crocodile swims the shortest distance possible. And we'd already said that the shortest distance is this along this line where the landing point P is on this perpendicular line to the bank. X would be zero. So in this case, we work out the time taken when X is zero. So that's five times the square root of 36 plus 0, 0 squared 0, plus 4 times 20 minus 0. So in this case we've got 5 times the square root of 36 plus 4 times 20. So that's 5 times 6 plus 80. 30 plus 80 is 110. Now that's tenths of a second, so that'll be 11.0 seconds. So it takes slightly, that's the exact value, I'm just putting down one decimal place uh, to compare it with 
the previous answer. So we've got 11.0 and 10.4. So let's examine what we've achieved so far. As x increases from 0 up to 20, when x was 0, it took 11 seconds to reach the zebra. When x was 20, it took 10.4 seconds to reach the zebra. Now the question tells us, if we look at part B, between these two extremes there is one value of x which minimises the time taken. We have to find that and calculate the minimum possible time. So somewhere in here, we don't know where, there is a value of x that produces a lesser value than 11 and 10.4. So somewhere in here we're trying to find a minimum value. So we're looking really for a stationary point on this curve. And remember stationary points, this, this is, this. let's call this y, this graph y equals t of x, this is the time taken, um, we will find a stationary point if we differentiate, find t dashed of x and set it equal to zero because the gradient at this minimum point, gradient of a tangent, would be horizontal, would be zero. Anywhere else on the curve, the gradient, in this case, going downhill, and then it would be going uphill. So we need to differentiate for part b. So let's look at this. The formula's not really in a given in a way that can be easily differentiated just now. We need to prepare it for differentiation. So it's 5 times the square root of 36 plus x squared. We'll write that as 36 plus x squared to the power of half. Because remember, our differentiation rules always involve a power. And we've got it. Let's multiply this out. We've got an 80 minus 4x. And I think at this stage, we can now differentiate to see what the gradient formula looks like. So here we've got 5 times something raised to the power of half. We multiply by the power, a half times the 5, that's 5 halves, times that something raised. And then we take 1 away from the power to the minus a half. Now this wasn't an x in here, it was a 36 plus x squared, so the chain rule tells us to differentiate the thing in the brackets there. And if we differentiate 36 plus x squared, we get 2x. Differentiating 80 gives 0. Differentiating minus 4x gives us minus 4. So let's tidy that up a bit. t dashed of x, it's the gradient formula, Negative a half power would mean we can make up a fraction and put that down at the bottom with a positive half power. The 2's already down at the bottom. There's a 2 up at the top. These 2's can cancel. And we're just left with a 5 times an x on the top of this fraction with, as we said, this 36 plus x squared to the negative a half going down to the bottom and becoming 36 plus x squared to the positive a half. Now anything to the positive a half means the square root. And we're going to have a minus 4, plus 0, minus 4. And so therefore for stationary points, which is what we're hunting, we set that gradient, t dashed, x, the derivative, equal to 0. So that means we've got 5x over the square root of 36 plus x squared minus 4 equals 0. So let's add 4 to both sides and we'll get that fraction being equal to 4. Let's multiply both sides by the square root of 36 plus x squared to get rid of that fraction. 
So we'll have 4 times square root of 36 plus x squared. Now, the problem is the square root. So let's take the left-hand side and square it, and the right-hand side and square it. And they'll still be equal. 25 x squared, when we square 4, we'll get 16. When we square the square root of something, we'll just get the something. So that'll be 36 plus x squared. The square root disappears. Let's multiply that out. 25 x squared, giving us whatever 16 times 36 is, plus 16x squared. I can now take 16x squared from both sides. 16x squared from 25x squared gives me 9x squared. And that'll be equal to 16 times 36. Let's divide both sides by 9. x squared equals 9 into this. 9 into 36 goes 4. So we'll be left with 16 times 4. We now need to take the square root. Now normally it would be plus or minus, but we're just really considering x being positive. We'll maybe say that in this step. x equals the square root of 16 times 4. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So we get 8. And we'll just state that we know that Sometimes we consider a negative, but in this case x is greater than 0. So x equals 8, and we are told that is a minimum, so we don't need to prove it. That's given to us in part b. But we are asked to calculate the minimum possible time. So we would have to plug this value x equals 8 into the actual formula that we had, there it is, to find out what the time was when the crocodile swims along to this point here and then crawls along the rest. So let's find that 5 times square root of 36 plus 8 squared plus 4 times 20 minus 8. So we've got 5 times 36 plus 64 is 100, 5 times root 100, plus 4 times 12. So now square root of 100 is 10, that's 5 times 50 plus 48, 50 plus 48 is 98. And remember this is tenths of a second, so that equals 9.8. Seconds. So that is less than the 10.4 and the 11. So the graph now is, is looking like this, that at value x equals 8, we've got a height there of 9.8, which gives the minimum time. So it says find this value of x and hence calculate the minimum possible time. That's the minimum possible time there. Minimum possible time. 9.8 seconds.